Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Hank, I did want to touch on this. Is, okay. is, is naturalized citizens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think it has been like it's the biggest insult to uh the 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 weak border security you know traditionally by you know by the left and the amnesty and all that for the people that came here and did the right thing i think it's it's absolutely horrible i've met a handful of people in my life who are all quality i'm sure you guys know who five finger death punch is if you ever have opportunity to to meet zoltan and listen to his story like it had me in tears on how him and his family fled communist to come to the United States for a better, right? I had a Marine uh, who worked for me who is now, she's now, she was prior enlisted, she's now a major in the Marine Corps from India. Family came here, earned their citizenship. Mm -hmm. And I remember her telling me she came home with B's on her report card and her dad like whooped her bad. And he took it as an insult that she was being lazy and she didn't respect the gift that they had by coming to America and having the opportunity to become American citizens. Mm -hmm. And she's carried that through her and her drive and everything. And and one of the best human beings I've ever met in my life. And you sit there and you talk to somebody who's a naturalized citizen and you will realize they know more about the country than – our lazy asses who were born here <laughs> and we take things for granted, you know, we, and we take things for granted. because like we're here. Why do I need to know these things? I learned them, whatever, but it's just, it's just on that side of things. So it's just the education and it's the value. You find value in this, you know, you came here and you've raised a family here. And I just think that, you know, there are, We have 22,000 plus gun laws on the books. I bet we could eliminate 21,000 of them because they all are redundant. They all are the same thing and somebody just wants to put their name on it. It's the same thing for the immigration laws. We have immigration policies that are amazing, but people just want to keep changing them just to get their name out there and get their name in the history books. And that's wrong and it's disrespectful. Yeah. There's a couple of things I think. I mean, obviously... You know, um, I think there's lots of Americans that are that are patriots, right? I, I believe that a lot of the stuff I learned from Americans, you know, people who appreciated it. But I think it's not cool anymore. That's the thing, and I think that you like in my generation when we came here, and these guys that you mentioned who came here in that generation, it was a great thing. But when I look at kids now, either kids like how Lola and I both came here, we immigrated here, and we naturalized but our kids were born here, when you look at their kids or their kids or even young people who are coming to America now, that's all going away. There's no one teaching those things anymore. It's not cool anymore. It's like, hey, don't pretend that you're happy to be in America. You should be mad (laughs) that you're in America. You know, it still owes you more than to be here. Can can I I ask a question? I'd like, you know, all of you guys, I I fall outside of this. Completely. I, I don't have, I mean, I have friends, so I have an opinion. You have an opinion on everything. But what about the, um, uh, however you want to call it, the, the, you know, the illegal aliens, if you want to use that term or, you know, whatever term you want to use for the non-citizens that are here. Do you support um, them having a, a guaranteed pathway to citizenship with, uh, with, without kicking them out of the country for all of those people. Um, obviously, with some sort of criminal history review, I mean, I think almost all of us can agree on a, well, <laughs> we should all be able to agree on that. But how do you guys feel about um, giving everyone a guaranteed path to citizenship that's here? Not automatically, not sweeping, you know, we're going to let it, you know, we're just going to announce it for everybody. But listen, we're not going to kick you out of the country Uh but you've got to follow this plan. Is that something that you guys can get behind and believe in? Or do you just think, no, if you're here illegally, we should, or is those two options too polar, too black and white, we need something in the middle? 
Uh, Rolando, you want to go for this first? This one's always tough because I guess I'm the Hispanic, even though I'm Puerto Rican. Um, I personally know enough immigrants that came here legally that find that offensive, that they did everything the right way. They put the blood, sweat, and tears. They made the sacrifices, and they spent the money. So because I know so many people like that, I don't believe in that because I've seen so many people do it that I don't think it's an excuse. And I think that the people that come here illegally are oftentimes exploited. They're exploited by two different groups. Obviously, we know that Trump mentioned the coyotes and the cartels during the debate and, you know, everybody made fun of it. But that's absolutely true. Yeah, because so we have, the coyotes we, carry you on their back. They're actually animals like in Narnia. Yeah, exactly. But no, we have a huge illicit sex trade and the Chamber of Commerce in the United States basically values slave labor. That's what it is. So I think you might want to propose that, but you'll actually get a lot of opposition from the powers that be because they don't want to lose that monopoly on 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 cheap labor. There's no so, question about it. Yeah. I agree with what you're saying, but yeah. on the offensive side, I'm not talking about a sweeping you get to stay. I mean, a literal path to citizenship. So, so, and, so, so can, I can, I mean, I think you already have, if, I, I think you kind of already if have I can, one. If I, let me say this. Let me well, say, yeah. Not if you're being detained, well, let necessarily. Me say, let me say, I mean, like, a, you're here illegally. Hang on, Hank, let okay. me just get this mm -hmm. 10 seconds out. You're here illegally. If you come and meet with DHS or whoever you want to, to put on uh, in charge of this and get on the list, and start following the path to citizenship, we will guarantee we won't kick you out of the country as long as you're not a violent criminal, yada, yada, yada. So that way, those people that did it the right way, and I've got tons of them mm -hmm. uh, that are my friends as well, don't feel like they get shortchanged. These people have to do the same thing. They have to go through the classes. They have to do the citizenship. They have to do the background checks. They have to do all of the things. But make sure that that happens. And then if you don't, then, you know, I mean, just some way to... I mean, Maybe I understand, like, I actually live through what this. What will that do to minority unemployment in this country that is already bad? Because right now, most of those people are, unfortunately, they unfortunately for them, they're living under the shadows. They're getting paid under the table. But once you give them the path, they have to work legally. Can we sustain the burden of 30 million people? Because it's probably 20 or 30 million. It's not this 11 or 12 million that they use now. Mm -hmm. Can we sustain economically the influx of 20 or 30 million people that will most likely be on unemployment, most of them right away, because you will not be able to get that many jobs for people, especially when we should be encouraging Americans that really should be taking a lot of these jobs themselves to, to do that. You know, that's if Americans want the jobs. Let me can I just say this because yeah. I actually lived through this thing. You know, my, my family came here in 1983 with a visa through JFK Airport on a plane. <laughs> all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And then we overstayed that visa. And then uh, my dad uh, applied, there was a, I guess it's called sponsoring. Like, so if you work for mm -hmm. a company and they they decided to go through this whole thing with you, they could sponsor you being able to come here. You have to fill out all this paperwork. So we did all of that stuff. And um, from 1983, it took till 1992 where we could actually get our green card and I had to leave the, the, the whole family had to leave and go back to our, one of our last port of entries, which was England. Right. So we had to leave and do that in 92. Before that, there were people who I knew who got amnesty. So there was this path that we were on, but there were all these multiple paths and there were people who I actually helped out who had just come into the country a year, two years before that. You know, fill out some paperwork, boom. You don't have to go anywhere. You could stay here. You could do whatever you want to do. And we had to, like, spend all this money, leave, go to another country. We had to stay in England for, like, a month, you know, figure out, like, where are we going to stay and all this kind of stuff while we were over there, go to the American embassy, go through all kinds of background checks. The worst part of that, my older brother was too old. So it was basically my parents or my dad, his wife, and any kids that were under 19, and my brother came in right over that. So from he, he stayed here and didn't get anything until like 2005. That's how long it took him on his own to do any of that. So I'm telling you all you, you guys all of this because this is how crazy it is. And the amnesty was given saying like, hey, we're going to stop doing this. And in order to stop doing this, we're going to give everyone amnesty. And then whoever's on the path, they'll go on the path and we're never going to do this again. The problem is, I think, with immigration is the same problem with guns. No one wants to reset to zero 
and go, we're going to get together and fix all of this. And whatever we set out, that's it from now on. Right. Mm -hmm. So with with immigration, it would be like we reset it or, or close it. And like, this is it. This is the end. This is the rule we set. This is the line. Everyone gets on this line. There's there's no exemptions. No, if you're from Cuba and you touch, you know, you mm -hmm. touch the uh, the beach over here, you're good to go. You can do whatever you want. If you come from Haiti, we're putting you right back in the boat and sending you back over. Like all of that, all of the different paths, I think, is what just creates this problem. And everyone's trying to game the system. Oh, let me just wait a little bit longer. Maybe they'll do that amnesty thing again. And I remember back then, it wasn't the first time they did the amnesty. And everyone's like, how many times are we going to do this? We're just going to live in a vicious cycle and we're never going to solve the problem. And I think it's the same thing with guns. If people, you know, it's like when people say, uh, we should, you know, are you willing to give up something and negotiate? Okay, let's go right back to zero to the Second Amendment. Okay, and start from there if you want to do things, because there's already been a bunch of things given and taken and this thing and that thing. And you're not really going to solve it, you know, by by trying to figure out, like, who's wrong, who's right, who got the most and all that kind of stuff. But on the gun thing, aren't, isn't that unicorn rainbow farts? I mean, that's never going to happen. It's There's a zero probability, not even a zero point zero zero one without a complete reset in the country. There's some sort of you know, civil war type scenario, that's never going it's to happen. The same because the immigration. Stuff, it's the same thing for immigration. Then. It's the exact same thing. If you can't solve big problems, then you'll never be able to yeah. solve any of them. Then then we're just going to fail as a society. That's it. Mm -hmm. If you, if, if okay, you... Well, don't you think that's it then? Because obviously they've been, it's just like we talked about yesterday. And this is what worries me about the Second Amendment. It's just continually eroded and eroded and eroded. And our side of the, uh, of the ledger never wins anything. Um, isn't it just going to erode down to we either got to stand up for it, not legislatively, because that's not working, or we just have to let it go. What is immigration? Just, what does immigration come to? Everyone's just trying to get in now. However, they could get in. Can I get in on a plane? Can I get in on a boat? Can I get on this train? Can I come across the board? Can I do this thing? Can I make tunnels? Okay, they fill this in. We go. You know, they they put a thing. We go deeper. We go higher. I mean, so that's the same thing for guns. It's yeah, because until we until you to fix stuff. Yeah, until you have like an authority that, like Hank said, where you have this is the rule, this is definitive. There's no loopholes or anything. You can't solve that problem. And the problem that we have with immigration is that let's be honest, the Democratic Party sends agents to countries in South America, and they basically say, if you make it to the United States, we're going to give you all these tax incentives and everything. They lie to them. So. Everybody's getting screwed in that situation because uh, illegal immigrants are coming here thinking that they're going to have an opportunity that's not going to happen. They're basically going to work for slave wages in some sweatshop that, that nobody knows about in the middle of nowhere, or they're going to die on the way to the border. But, you know, companies don't care because they get free, cheap labor. The Democratic Party doesn't care because they might be able to eventually turn some of those people into citizens and they'll be con built in constituents. Uh, the Republican Party probably participates in it through the Chamber of Commerce as well. They just act like they're above the fray and they just don't admit it. Or it's a good boogeyman yeah. for the Republican Party. Exactly. So it's just another thing to throw out there. You know, they always perpetuate problems. I, I know that they go in their back rooms and they're like, OK, so this is what we're going to argue about today. But it's only so that people think that we're opposed to one another on this issue when we're not. So as long as as long as people think about it and they don't see us go to the back room and smoke cigars afterwards, it's all good. Yeah. And even if they do, we can still convince them otherwise, because we'll just say they're going to take away your guns or they're going to do this terrible thing. And that's it. And we get pissed off and we buy into it. Every how time. do you fix so, a How do you fix a closet that's com like I know I've got closets like this. Right. Or like I have a shed right now on my property. That's nothing but junk. Right. How do you fix that? How do you mm -hmm. fix it? You take everything out. And whatever doesn't go back in, you throw it out, right? Yes, but you have unilateral control over that, right? Yeah, and, that's the problem. And, right, so I hear what you guys are saying about what all the issues are. But what is, it seems to me like the solution you guys are proffering, that the way, the only way this comes to a good outcome is if we reset to zero. Other than that, I haven't heard you guys tell me anything, and I don't see a path, and that's what I'm asking you guys to explain to me, what is your path to reset to zero? 
Maybe because there is one. We're probably closer to tearing each other apart and go. I don't. It's, it's not. I, it's not a fun thought for me. But we're probably closer to that than actually working stuff out. We're in 2020. We have all this technology. We have all this wealth. We have all this awesomeness, right? And what are we doing? We're destroying each other. I've never seen. Just talking about Trump. I've never seen any president in the times that I've been here in America or looking at America. I've never seen them treat anyone like this. I mean, I remember Reagan being hated, right? I remember Bush one being hated. I've never seen anything like Trump. Basically, if this if he loses or this is a thin victory, it's based on the media just smacking him upside the head every single every single day. We are closer, and I hate to say it because I know there's people who you know feel like, oh, you're fear mongering or you're, you you want to profit off of saying that we're like close to a civil war. We're closer to that than fixing anything. I think I so, think oh I think when you look throughout history I think history is your guide here and most democracies don't last more than 2 or 3 centuries it's just a fact that's the trend it's something in humans that just eventually causes us to blow up our societies and if you think every other major country in the world that even exists today how many governments did they go through even great britain they were a monarchy they switched to a parliamentary monarchy and now they're a, de a, a parliamentary democracy so they went through multiple shifts in their governments and they went through essentially revolutions with Ireland and things like that and even uniting the kingdoms. Germany was like six different countries over multiple parts of its history. You know, Turkey used to be the Ottoman Empire. There is almost no other country in the world except for the United States. Maybe China has been around longer than everybody else, but even they've gone through different dynasties and uh, forms of government. Japan used to be an empire. and Now they're a, a, a constitutional uh, country as well. So I think it's possible that maybe we're reaching the end of our life because we've moved so far away from our principles and forgotten that we're a republic, that we've made ourselves into every other country where we have a strong central authority that eventually everybody gets fed up of and they want to blow up the system because we went too far away from our principles. And so, it's possible that that's the way that it is. So you guys are basically calling the game. The game is over. And we just got to wait for the whistle to blow, and then we're going to empty the stands, tear it down, and start from scratch, right? That's what you guys are basically saying. There's really no other realistic path to fixing this. And I'm not including Ronald because he hasn't said anything yet. <laughs> but other than Ron, you, you got to be scared saying, of the quiet guy, especially well, Ron I mean, is never I quiet. Get, so I I, I know I him. <laughs> him. That's why I can't wait to get to him. But you two guys are saying you you don't see a path to recovery. Is that correct? I think we have it too good. I think everyone's thinking, man, am I in the no, matrix? No, no, yes or no. I don't I'm, I'm just telling you. That's what I think. I, I look around and think maybe this is too good. Maybe we just have it so good that it's like, no, I'm not going to do anything about it. And we're not going to actually try to fix things. We're not going to actually try to deal with problems or deal with our common problems. Because it's like, look, we could we could fight forever about who's president. I don't care. But there's genuine problems that we can deal with in America that people could sit down and say, OK, let's deal with this. It's not. And, and you know, like there's there's problems that we could fight about, like guns. Right. We could fight about that. But there's things that we could sit down and deal with. But we are not going to. I don't feel like we're going to do that. So so yes, you're saying yes, you're calling the there is no path out of this other than waiting for it to burn up. I and feel start it's like how long does it take for the majority of people to realize that we're in the matrix and start burning things? There's just a couple of them doing it right now. Basically, like I think like Antifa and BLM and all that is just crisis actors, right? But so those guys are just they're just trying to light the fire. At some point there may be a fire. It may take us longer than other other countries are there. They're trying to put back the lockdowns in other countries, and they're like, hell no. And the people are getting mad and doing whatever. And we're getting in, we're getting into other things here, right? And we're getting into distractions. So my answer to you is, I don't feel that that's tomorrow, like I'm going to wake up tomorrow. But I do feel like sometime soon, as I always tell people, it's like the aliens. When do you wake up in the morning and the president's saying, hey, there's aliens, they're real, that we're giving them your children, and then people go, what? And then they start fighting, right? There's something that's going to happen. You're going to wake up one day and everyone's like, that's it. We're not, I'm not going this route. And maybe to what Rolando was saying, we're just going to break up and we're not going to be a big, massive United States of America anymore. We'll be Florida or the South or something from the Hunger Games or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
That's me. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what uh, Ron or Rolando think. I think I'm kind of inclined uh, inclined to agree with you. I think it could be salvageable, but it's going to require a large majority of the country or at least a large portion of the country to be on the same page with that. And I just don't think that we have that. I don't think that we have that anymore. And I think that if we didn't have external forces like the media and social media, I think it would be possible. But the problem is social media is essentially built to gaslight people. That is the purpose. The more rage and anger that you have, the more that there is. So I think social media injected something into us because I complain with this to my wife all the time. Growing up as a millennial, I remember going to college in 2005 and my friends were of every race, uh, ethnicity and culture. And we used to joke around with each other politically incorrect. We would make race jokes. Everybody was cool about that. Everybody was great. We all got along. Then social media came along and unfortunately Barack Obama became president. And I think that that shifted everything because if you didn't agree with Obama, they called you a racist right away. So that blew up almost all the progress that we started making. Not that America was perfect, but I think my generation was starting to get to the point where uh, racial issues within our generation were not a big deal. It was the past generations that were kind of uh, holding on to those remnants, and it was dying off with each successive generation. And then something happened with social media and everything that just triggered rage and anger as the way that you get clicks and things like that. And I think that that kind of took us backwards from where we had gone on, on top of other things. So I think that was a wrench that nobody could have ever anticipated, and and I think it's causing problems. Now, will we will we fall apart and, and balkanize and fight each other? Maybe. Or we might become sheep like China, where, like you said, where if they give you UBI and they give you the creature comforts, people will just take it and, and, and that's it. And so we'll, uh, like like the quote from uh, Star Wars that uh, Pat Mayamadala had, how does democracies die under thunderous applause? It's like, we give you free stuff and everybody's like, yay, this is great, I don't need anything. So that's how China controls their society now. They basically give them enough to feel enough freedom and to have enough things. Because you go to China and the cities are impressive. There's no doubt. You go to Shanghai and you're like, wow, even New York can't compare to this. How did they do this? It's because they give them just enough and to nothing, feel okay. nothing belongs to you, though. It's just exactly. like being a billionaire in Russia. What does that mean? Well, look at how many subscription services and things that we're, we're okay with now. Everybody leases stuff. Everybody rents things. Everybody finances stuff, nobody owns things. So we're already used to not owning things anymore. We're being conditioned that way. Property taxes, do you even own your own house? No, you don't. So I think we've slowly been conditioned to this anyway. Yeah. And, and, and it's gonna be really difficult to go, to go against that because it's taken decades to get to this point. It would at a minimum take decades to reverse it if not a massive you know, revolution or something like that. Yeah, what do you I mean, think? That's right. What do you think about this, Ron? And bear in mind, we're over the nine o'clock hour. I don't want to go to seven and a half hours again, but this is one of the reasons why I really love Mark. I wish you would do this stuff with me more. Oh, it's great. Because yeah. Mark, right. Mark, Mark will have awesome. us here for like, you won't even notice the time going by. No, I, I've loved it, Mark. I appreciate the questions. I think it's great. Yeah, what What do you think about this, Ron? Um, <clears throat> I... I, like I love what you, Ron, what you said about you know your your feelings about it, and I think it's great. I think we're we need to come together. Mm -hmm. People need to have personal accountability, and they need to put their feelings, leave them on at the door when they walk in the room, and they need to look at the greater good of the country. Uh, have a population problem. We have. Uh, a, a company that is going deeper and deeper into debt every day. And if the more we keep giving away things, the more we keep giving away, you know, free housing, the free, free medical, a, a free education, all these other programs for them without the return, without the return of their tax dollars, without the return of them actually doing the right thing, we are going to com diminish the value of our country, we are going to diminish our platform, our security, and our borders, internal borders. Now, I'm not talking about the perimeter, I'm talking about the, the state borders. Mm -hmm. And it's going to create more of a divide. I think that, like I said, there's enough laws on the books. And I think we need to have almost essentially erase all the laws, expedite the laws, and come up with a process. Where you have to check in 
universities. You, and again, now we're talking about job creation and monitoring and, and working and everything. So almost like a guidance counselor, you know, or a guidance counselor slash head, headhunter, helping develop these people, helping to develop them, helping them navigate and learn how to manage things, how to get a house, how to, you know, pay your bills, how to have your insurance, how to do all the things correctly. And, and there's no right answer for it. You know, it's just, it's, it's going to take a program. It's going to take a solution. And you, and the other thing too, is you said was, you know, it took what, 10, 20 years to get us to this point. It's going to, mm-hmm. it's going to take that, if not more to actually get to that point. But the hardest part we're at, we're, we're so, you know, below the ground right now, it, you know, it's, it's going to take us a long time to dig out of this hole because everybody's concerned about feelings. Mm-hmm. Know, like now when you when, I don't know if you guys have bought a gun in the last two months, but when you fill out the form, it's no longer male female; it's male female and non non binary. They've added that onto the form, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's just like this. This stuff is just it's it, it's got to stop. Um, but the immigration thing is just um, I think there's a process, and I think like I said before, it's just respectful to everybody who did it correctly. And I don't care that if you've been here, this, that, and, and the other. I, I think that we give them, you have a 90 day window and within that 90 days you have to do A, B, C, and D. And when day 91 comes, if you don't have all four of those things completed, you're out, you're done. Um, you know, I, and I, I, it might be kind of harsh, but here's the thing. They throw gay dudes off roofs. They stone They mutilate women so that all they can do is reproduce and not have any, you know, any sensory, you know, pleasure, you, you know, to their body in other countries. And these people don't understand that. And they think that we should just open the door when we're not, we, we're not, we don't know who we're letting in and we need to do the background checks. And it's not offensive. You know, it's not offensive to make someone have an ID. It's not offensive to have, require an ID to vote. Uh, you know, it's it's not offensive to require this because this is if you make it, this is what you have to do to become a citizen here. You have to do these things. If you don't do them, go back to where you came from and and think that you're going to go back to your country and do this. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.